Hey there, it's Cheryl, and today I'm going to be doing a overview, a long version overview of Distressed FX Plus. The at the bottom you'll see two Distressed FX icons. The first one is the original Distressed FX, and the second one is a Plus version. So I'm going to select that. You just saw our splash screen. The top left corner is a camera icon. I'm going to go ahead and select that and bring a picture in. If you're downloading the app for the first time, you need to make sure that you allow the app access to your photos or you won't be able to do any editing. So I've already done that, so I'm just going to go ahead and choose picture, going up to the top to my albums, and I'm going to select a picture of South Carolina. Okay, in this area, this is um, where you can change the orientation or the size of the image. The, uh, at the bottom you see cancel, that'll just take you out and get you a new photo. Or there's a little box with a left arrow that will change the orientation. The button next to that, the little um, arrow circle going left, will just take you right back. And then the next to the done button, you can orientate it to go uh, right. But I'm going to hit the done button back. And the little multiple square is where you can change to um, square version. You can change to um, different horizontals. Um, that's kind of like a panoramic. But I, I normally just stick with my original or I go with square. So I'm going to go, I'm going to accept that. So I just hit done and it will pull me in the app. At this point, I am going to start with the buttons at the top. The first one next to the camera is a reverse button. So if I come in and I put a texture on and I hit the arrow going um, left, it'll ask me if I want to reset the unflattened changes. I'm going to hit reset. So that just takes the texture off or anything that I've, I've done that wasn't flattened. The next one is a zoom feature and so you can zoom in and see if there's anything maybe you want to take out those telephone wires in the back um, which is a whole other um, demo on how to get rid of wires and stuff I'll do a video on that as well so I'm gonna go ahead and click out of that and then there's an information oh hey who's that um, this just tells you a little bit about me and how um, I live and a little bit of how the app came to be. Um, there's my, I'm also a painter, so there's my painting stuff and my cat, Skunky. Um, so I also do oil painting, so I try to incorporate watercolor and oil painting into the textures most of the time. We also have a credit section. This will take you actually to our website. And here um, I'm thanking people that have contributed, whether they were beta testers or they we use some of their artwork, um, thanking our families and good stuff like that. So I'm gonna go out of that and go back into the app. Here is our website, which, you know, I don't know if that many people visit or not, but it is here. And if you go to the top right corner, we have um, a user gallery, uh, a place where you can download the app. It'll take you to the app store and then a help and contact there. That is very important. You can watch videos here. Um, you can ask questions here. Super important. Okay, I'm going to go back into the app. And at the top is our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. But for now, oh, at the bottom, you can, there's a, there's a question mark that'll, there's some like, I call them just real quick little answers. Um, if you really are having trouble with the app, the best thing to do is watch one of these tutorials. And then um, here where this is, a, there's a circle with a star. This shows you our Instagram feed pictures that we've um, put up. I think this is changes like every 24 hours or something so I'm gonna go out of there so that gives you that was the I button with the circle there's a little cog that allows you to save it as a JPEG or a ping 
and then the box with the up arrow is a save feature. The first one will save it to your camera roll. The second one is you can send it to email. And then the other one is you can send it to family or, I don't know, uh, message it to somebody, etc. Okay, now I am going to go ahead and go through the middle area first i'm gonna i probably should select a uh, texture let's see here i'll go with charm it's always a good one okay so the middle row the first thing is a blur tool and basically you can move the little circle around and at the bottom the little white circle with the black drop in it that'll change how blurry things get and then you can open up the circle to have more options with what stays in focus versus what is out of focus. And you can get really blurry there, changing that depth of field, or just keep it very, very subtle. So I'm gonna hit X, because I really don't want this one blurry at all. The next button is the masking feature. What is masking? Masking is being able to erase little bits and pieces away from your main subject so let's see I think I will go ahead and show you what masking is I have one texture on there right now if I was to come in and add something and want to erase it's also going to erase away my texture I don't want my texture to go away this one anyway so I'm going to take my index finger I'm going to press the screen and I'm going to flatten the image once you flatten it, you can't change anything. So be real careful when you do that. So at this point, I can come in and put another layer and erase away parts of it, but I'm still gonna have my bottom texture. For example, let's say I wanna add some birds. I'll go with uh, scattered. With the birds, you can take your finger and move them around. You could take two fingers and pinch and you can um, shrink them. I really am a fan of keeping the birds looking realistic. I once had somebody say to me, well, you guys, there's too many birds out there. Where I live, I see birds every single day. So that argument didn't really sit well with me because there are birds in the sky all the time. I do think it's important to keep your birds on your images looking realistic and not overdoing it. And one of the great things about masking is that you can do that now. They're not gonna look like everybody else's birds if you do masking. So here I've selected them. I'm moving them around and I'm gonna hit the check mark to accept this. Oh wait, before I do that, there's a little um, uh, slider with a bird. You can actually lower the opacity and make them look even a little bit more realistic by not having them just this stark black. So I bumped it down a little bit and I'm gonna hit the check mark. I'm gonna come into the masking tool, which is the little eraser icon and hit that. Okay, so the t uh, there's two sliders. One, the first one controls the size of your brush. The second one controls the opacity or transparency. And I'm gonna have the transparency set real high, but the brush a little bit small click this little finger right here. I'm gonna come in, I'm just gonna erase away a couple of these. I'm even gonna erase one up here in the front and that way, look at that. Now it doesn't look like distressed F birds, FX birds, it looks like real birds. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the check mark to accept this. If I wanted to, I could hit that little trash can, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that because um, I, I like these like that. So I'm gonna hit the check mark. At this point, I could flatten the image again, taking my finger, hitting flatten, and I could come in and add more if I want, or the last little icon here in the center is the editing where it controls one, brightness, the top, or excuse me, the left, uh, slider controls brightness. The top one controls sharpness. Be real careful with this one because it is 
you can end up HDRing the crazy out of this and um, I, I don't think that's the effect that you want with this app. But you can bump up the sharpness a little bit. Like it's so sensitive. You only need to go a tiny bit. Like I would leave it right there. You go any more, whoo, it's just too much. So I'm going to bump it down just a tiny, tiny bit. I like that. The bottom, the little painter's palette is saturation. So let's bump up the saturation just a tiny bit. Yeah, you could go crazy, but it's always better to just be more realistic. And then the far right is contrast. You can kind of blur it out a little bit, make it real subtle and light, or you can just go really, really contrasty with it. I don't normally do too much with the contrast. I keep it very, very minimal. What if I don't like any of it? Over in the left corner is a little circle with a bar and a triangle. If you hit that, boom, it's reverted everything back. I'm going to go back in and change. I want a little bit more sharpness. I want a little bit more saturation and I'm just gonna tiny, tiny bit get rid of that brightness. So I'm not gonna touch the contrast, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna hit the little check mark. Guess what, I'm gonna flatten it again because I may wanna do, I may do want, wanna do more and I don't wanna lose what I just did, so I flattened it. Okay, so this, where I'm scrolling, we call these our gels. If you go over to the far right, to the little suitcase that says switch pack, hey, look at that, more options. Here you'll have light leaks and um, clouds, which are very, very popular. I think it's one of the most popular things that we have because you can literally take a really boring photo with no sky and just within a, f a finger touch. Hey, not only do you have clouds, you have a really pretty photo. So um, I'm really, really into our, into our clouds. And the cool thing is with the masking now, you can come in and guess what? You can remove stuff you don't want and keep your clouds. So I'm gonna open my brush up really far and lower the opacity. And I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna erase away those clouds off off my main subject, which really my foreground here is a subject, that rock and of course the house. I'm just gonna get rid of all of that cloud off my foreground and off my little house. And I'm just gonna keep that, that cloud in the background. I just think it adds a little bit of, little bit of character. There we go. I think I've got it all. Get these edges a little bit. One more little on the house. And watch what you see what happens here. Boom. I'm gonna hit the check mark and I'm gonna come in and now that I've flattened it, this adjustment's gonna be made on that texture area. So I'm gonna increase the brightness a little bit because that cloud is just a little bit too dark. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that. Maybe do my, I might mess with the contrast a little bit now. So there we go, I'm happy with that. We'll go ahead and flatten. Okay, so the top row is gels, clouds, lights. The bottom row is the textures. This is where all the magic happens. Again, um, the textures are, some are painted, some are organic, um, some are canvas. Some of them are, I don't know if I should tell you where this one comes or not, but it's probably a trade secret. <laughs> all right, what is the custom button? Well, you can come in and grab another image and layer it on top of that. Obviously, I'm not gonna keep Henry on top of my beach scene, but I just wanted to show you that you can bring in your own textures and change the opacity and just have little little peeps thrown, showing through. I could have put something on that rock, but 
I'm going to I'm just really trying to give you an overview of the features here so we'll get have a Henry go bye bye switch pack the top um, this is called our pack picker area the top is our very original textures which to me are still some of the best textures ever uh, especially our textured charm I've got to say is probably one of the most used textures and then underneath that if you scroll with your finger you'll see all the other yummy packs that we have if you click the little eye it shows you it gives you kind of a brief overview of what the textures look like I don't know if a lot of people even know that's there or go to it but it is there and each pack has a different um, picture that we've worked with to show you to give you a general idea I think sometimes it's just easier to bring in your own picture and play with it but that option is there so um, just a kind of a little interesting fact um, most of these are pictures of um, things in the area where I live um, or tr my travels like the house with the bird is from South Carolina on a trip I took uh, the trees and this lake scene and the telephone wire are from right literally around my block um, I have used some images from others like the obscure um, is from an artist named Benjamin and if you go to the credits you'll find a link to his work the bird underneath that is um, from one of my favorite artists and friend Jamie Hyden so there's interesting little things going on here that people don't really know about okay at the top I'm gonna exit out of that and I think I'm gonna sharpen this one more time and I'm pretty much gonna call this one done and I th I am pretty sure that I have covered all the features but I'm gonna go back and oh there's one I did not cover portrait mode masking If you go to the masking area you see that grayed out little button the reason that's grayed out is because this photo was not taken in portrait mode so one of the things with the Apple iPhone portrait mode photos is that they have a depth of field and there's a way to edit that with masking to be able to keep your main subject sharp and your background um, blurry with texture but since this photo was not done in portrait mode I'm not going to be showing you however I do have an entire video on it on my YouTube it's portrait mode masking and I highly encourage you to watch it because um, it's it's really cool and it's simple it takes seconds there's not a lot of work and you have a beautiful piece of art that you made you and your camera so when you're done with this if you haven't seen it yet hop over to the portrait mode masking video so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here so there's the fingertip masking and the portrait mode today we did the fingertip masking all right I think I covered it all if I did not I'm sure somebody will let me know I appreciate you watching this if you're not already subscribing to my channel I would appreciate it if you would I'm going to try to be doing um, more videos and um, I appreciate you and your support thank you